Good morning. When Congress takes a break, that's our cue to swoop in, you know, like vultures, and pick off an interview with a key member of our congressional delegation. Our guest this morning is exactly that. He's Congressman Mike Capuano of Somerville, who represents the 7th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome. I've never thought of you as a vulture, John. <laughs> you sure? Well, not, not even publicly. in a private not moment. Publicly. Not publicly. Well, that's good. We can talk more about that, but I want to let our viewers in on the breaking news. You, we were chatting just before we came on the air here. You told me that you are considering an offer to be Donald Trump's running mate to <laughs> Uh, that's an exciting concept. Yeah, well, I, I think I'll be waiting by the phone quite a long time. <laughs> do you think uh, that uh, you, that ticket would carry Massachusetts? Absolutely. Trump, guarantee Capuano? we'd do the best job in the history of the world. It's ridiculous. Just the best or the greatest? The greatest, I guess. You're going to have to get with the yeah, program. I, know, I if have you're to learn some of the lingo. Well, speaking of Trump, uh, when he came under fire recently for allegedly inciting violence at his rallies, I was reminded by several uh, emailers of a few years ago when you got in a little bit of trouble for getting excited at a labor rally and saying that sometimes you got to leave a little blood on the streets, I mm -hmm. believe was the quote. That uh, you subsequently apologized for that remark. I apologize for the, not for the remark. I apologize for the use of the term because the remark, those who heard it, heard it right, is it was meant to say that those people at the end of the labor, the people in labor are the ones who got the heck beat out of them on a regular basis. It was their blood being left on the street, not inciting violence. It was once in a while you need to stand up and take it and to make advancement. Now, granted, the way I said it got some people upset, but that was what was intended, and that's the history of the labor movement. Well, uh, the point that my correspondents were making was uh, you know, Donald Trump's not the first person to use language that Look can that. be interpreted uh, is sort it's, of violent. It's, it's, it's a little different, the language and saying, take that person out and beat the heck out of him. Right there, that one right there. Uh, that's, that's a completely different thing, John. I mean, rhetoric is one thing, uh, and he didn't get in trouble for his rhetoric. He got in trouble for standing in front of a huge audience and saying, punch him. I'd like to punch him in the head, get him out of here, and pointing to individuals. There is a significant difference between that and the general use of rhetoric. Do you find that disturbing, what he's uh, been not, doing? I, look, I, don't, I can't say I was surprised by it, and I yeah. won't be surprised by it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what is going on in Congress. Is anything going on? Nope, not much. Uh, it's unlikely we're going to do much. There was a lot of hope for the new speaker would be able to corral their extreme right-wingers and be able to get them to work more cooperatively. Thus far, it has been a failure. It has been much more the same, maybe even worse. There's not even an attempt by leadership thus far to bring anything to the floor that is this much controversial. And I don't mean controversial between the, the left and the right, but controversial between the right and the extreme far right. Um, so far, nothing. And what are the Democrats doing? Uh, there's not much we can do with the minority party. That's, that's, that is the benefit of being the majority party. You get to set the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the minority is never allowed to set the agenda, and so we are just stuck. You know, we can complain about it, which we're doing, but uh, we can't do anything. Well, about it. we have to take a break, but if you were to retake control of the House, the Democrats, yeah. what would be the first thing out of the box next year? Uh, I don't think there'd be any number of things, not the least of which is fixing some of the things we would like to fix uh, relative to taxes, relative to health care, relative to Social Security and Medicare. Um, you know, we'll have our own family debates about how to best do that, but at least we'll be debating and discussing and, and trying to push ahead something of substance. Uh, some people would like it, some people would like it, um, but to do nothing, in my opinion, is just accepting the status quo, and that's just not acceptable. All right, let's take a short break, and when we continue, more conversation with Congressman Mike Capuano. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with Congressman Mike Capuano of Somerville in the 7th Congressional District. And obviously, Congressman, a huge issue in your district that's of interest to people everywhere in our area is the proposed Green Line extension through Somerville into Medford. Uh, the Governor Baker and his administration stepped in and said the cost is prohibitive. We're going to have to cut way back. Uh, more recently, the feds warned the state that they have to deliver on certain promises. What is the status of this and uh, how much more delay is there going to be? Well, there's going to be a little bit more delay, but everybody understands that and most everybody accepts it. Uh, you know, right now the state's doing sharpening their pencils, trying to figure out what they can cut back with, and still deliver on the promises they made. Um, I have confidence that the project will get done. It won't be done uh, with the nicest stations that were proposed in the previous uh, iteration. The stations will be cut back. There'll be certain things cut back and you know there are different ways to do construction. Uh, but I 
at the moment, I feel confident. Our otherwise. federal funding is not at risk. Federal funding is at risk if the state cuts the project out. Yeah, I mean, the federal, there's a billion dollars of federal money that I've worked very hard to get. Right. But it is matching funds, and there are certain requirements, ridership requirements and environmental requirements, that the state has to fulfill. Uh, and if they don't fulfill it, the money will disappear, and it will not go to someplace else in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It will go to another state. Are, does the Baker administration's handling of this inspire confidence in you? So far, it's okay. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any problem. I'm not looking to throw money away. That was never. It's, I never was the one who designed the station to, to cost the most, most money. Most money. I was never the one who said, you know, you have to have seven stations. The answer is, you have to provide service. And the T is the one, and the MassDOT is the one who determines where the station should be, how many stations there should be, how they should be built. I, I wouldn't know those things. Uh, service is my goal and my only goal. Uh, the details of getting. Yeah, that's on the state. Another big issue involving your district is the uh, Everett Casino. Somerville Mayor Joe Curtitone has appealed a critical environmental permit for that casino construction just over the line in Everett, and he's taken a lot of heat from organized labor and win officials for doing that. You're a big labor guy. You're also a friend of Mayor Curtitone. Whose side are you on? Um my answer is this system, like all processes, will work it out. Uh, I didn't hear a whole lot of complaints from Marty Walsh was doing it, when Tom Anino was doing it. Um, each mayor, I'm a former mayor, uh, each mayor has a responsibility to the people that elect him to protect them as best they can. If that's the way Joe Curragione sees it, that's between him and his constituents. Um, I have confidence that the system will work itself out. Are his concerns valid? Um, I think there's some validity to them, sure. I mean, there's going to be a lot of automobiles generated by this particular casino, and I think that they will impact not just Boston, not just Everett. They will impact some of them. I think his, uh, his general concerns, I'm not sure of the details of his concerns. I haven't looked at the complaints. Uh, the general concerns are legitimate. Sure they are. When you go to a casino, what's your game? I, I don't. And I, it's, not, it's not because I don't gamble. I have nothing against gambling. I know the odds, and the odds are not in the favor of the players. Uh, they don't build billion-dollar casinos because they want to give me money. <laughs> If I play, if I gamble, me and you will play a little cards on the side, and there'll be nobody taking a cut of it. It'll be, it'll be me or you, and that'll be the end of it. That sounds like fun. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks, Congressman. Right, John. Great to Thank see you. you. Appreciate you coming by. That's it for me. Now it's back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.